time for a big picture discussion ahead of our holiday shortened week. It's busy, of course, in addition to earnings. We've got big Fed minutes. We've got Fed speakers. Right now, we've got Michelle Gibley and Kathy Jones joining us, Kathy, Chief Fixed Income Strategist, Michelle, Director of International Research. And we've also got a uh, international stock market that seems to be improving. Uh, Kathy, let's start uh, with the bond situation. What are you looking at this week after we got two hot inflation prints? How should that inform the trade for the next four days? Yeah, I think it's going to be a choppy market. We'll we'll wait for the Fed minutes. We'll hear lots of Fed speakers this week. I think I counted 12 speeches, <laughs> uh, maybe more this week. So we'll get plenty of information to chew on. Uh, and then we'll wait for the PCE numbers to come in. So I, I think we're sort of chop around here waiting for more data. And then those Fed minutes should be important because we will hopefully get some sort of insight into what they're waiting for. So we know that they kind of push back on the idea of a, a near-term rate cut. They're waiting for more information. So some specificity or around what they're waiting for would be would be great. Yeah, what's the math on 12 plus Fed speakers versus minutes? Like what 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 matters uh, more? It seemed like Austin Goolsby last week kind of moved the market, but I imagine minutes would be kind of the highlight. I think so. I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, we've heard so many people from the Fed sort of say the same thing, only with some nuances. So the minutes should be more interesting, hoping to see what the holdouts there are holding out for, and then maybe some discussion of the balance sheet and see if there's any plan to move forward with uh, tapering quantitative tightening. Okay. Uh, there's also a calendar on the international front uh, this week. Uh, Michelle, I know you're watching uh, what's happening in China and their leadership as they are trying to support their markets. What does that calendar look like? What are the highlights? Yeah, we're counting down the days until the March 5th National People's Congress meeting. And that's where uh, economic uh, policies and the growth target for this year are expected to be unveiled. Uh, you know, recent measures by the government indicate some concern on the part of the government. You know, they've tried to put a floor in stock prices. There was a larger than expected triple uh, R cut for banks. And this weekend, we had the largest ever cut to the reference rate for mortgages. You know, so far, that has resulted in an 8% bounce for the MSCI China index. But a more durable rally is really going to need uh, more decisive and broad measures to under to address the underlying issues. And thus far, the government has not yet shown the willingness to make big changes. We won't know for sure. They could they could have big changes, but we won't know until March 5th. Okay, so still a couple of weeks out. But to your point, the market's had a nice 10 days here, really trying to turn things around a bit. Of course, we've seen that story before, and it's ultimately been a trap. But the uh, goal, I guess, would be to look more like the Japanese stock market. Mr. Kleintupper was reminding us this morning that they are still – uh, leading uh, well, on the year. What do we need to look for uh, as far as that trend, Michelle? How do we know uh, if that's going to continue? Well, what are the kind of components of that? For China or for uh, Japan? For Japan. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, Japan just has a lot of good things going for it. Um, they've had a bunch of uh, market-friendly policies. They're shifting from the harmful deflationary environment of the past 30 years to a growth-oriented inflationary environment. Um, and this year we had another market-friendly policy, a change to the ex tax-exempt retirement savings program called NISA. And that allows, um, you know, it's like the IRA, it allows uh, investors to put more away for retirement. Um, and the prospect for inflation means that, you know, corporations no longer uh, can sit on cash and they need to put it to work. And so we're seeing an uptick in M and A and stock buybacks, and the the market is still relatively undervalued, despite being up 15% in local terms and 8% in U.S. dollar terms so far this year. Yeah, that's what I was uh, one of the takeaways from our comment this morning is that it doesn't look very expensive either. Still, I guess that's kind of what happens when uh, you got earnings picking up too, economy firming up. Uh, Kathy R, uh, as equity minded folks, we're of course hyper focused on Nvidia. When you look at credit markets, when you look at bonds. Is there any kind of like sector risk, concentration risk? Uh, is any of that showing up in bonds the way it is in stocks? We're certainly not seeing it in the pricing of spreads. Uh, I'm sure that there's some underlying risk there. 
but and particularly maybe around any exposure uh, a smaller regional banks might have to commercial real estate or perhaps uh, in in some areas of the tech sector but it doesn't look like from the pricing of the market um, the corporate bond market spreads are very low or they've been stable and low throughout a lot of volatility certainly interest rate volatility and equity market volatility. So nothing seems to be shaking up the corporate bond market right now. All right. Thanks, ladies. Good combo. Nice way to uh, set us up for this week. Kathy Jones and Michelle Gibley.